Hey everyone, it's Jim and Charles from Valves and More, an online vintage tube store. And today in Tube Lab number 139, we're going to talk a little bit about A to B listening. And today is the beginning of our annual summer solstice sale. This is the big sale in which we say thank you to all of our customers, all of you YouTube viewers, and um, it's just it's just like a big giant hug. And you get 15% off the entire store with the exception of the uh, kit amps. And we'll talk a little bit about the sale at the very end. I'll give you the dates and the code. But first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Well, when critically listening to music, preamps, amps, tubes, speakers, rooms, well, you get what I'm talking about. It is very important that you only change one thing at a time and take notes. But the most important thing is to keep the listening volume as close to identical as possible. The reason for this is a slight increase in volume will be perceived by our brains as improved sound, when all it really is, is just louder. Now, you might think you could just take out, let's say, a pair of preamp tubes and put another pair in, and the volume would stay the same. But every tube is different. Every tube is different, and the GM, the mutual conductance, which measures the output of the tube based on the input signal, mm -hmm. it's a ratio, um, will of course affect the output volume. So higher GM doesn't necessarily mean a better tube, but it will definitely affect the sound. Yeah, and if two tubes are testing close, they're probably going to be okay at the same volume level. But if they're a fair bit off, you'd be surprised how much of a difference it can make. Well, Charles has been working hard on a project to try and get a comparison into the store and I think you've been successful. What have you come up with Charles? Okay, so let me roll back a little bit and talk about where this all came from. We've been getting a lot of emails from you, from our customers, from our subscribers, and most of them have been asking about what tube is going to sound best in their system. And that can be a really hard question to answer, mainly for all the things that dad brought up earlier. So that got the gears of my head turning, thinking about how we can help people make a more informed choice when it comes to buying their tubes. And I zeroed in on the idea of doing A to B comparisons virtually. What do I mean by that? Well, have you ever done a find the difference game between two different pictures? Or maybe there's a picture online with a slider on it and you can slide it back and forth to see it before and after on the photo. Well, I thought if you can do that for photos, why can't you do that for audio? And thankfully, I wasn't the only one thinking that. After a bit of searching, I found a plugin that was made to do just that, and I've got it set up on our website now. So how does it work? Well, we start off by taking a high quality dynamic source track, and we play it through our universal 6 or 12 SN7 uh, kit preamp using our digital music player. We then captured the audio on our Zoom H5 recorder as a 2496 WAV file. We import the files into an audio editing program, snip out the portions that we want. These are big files, so we can't upload all of them into the site. And then we make sure that we level the volume of all those tracks so they're exactly identical. Then we put them into the store. So now, if you go to something uh, like our 6SN7 listing, which we have open right here. There you can play a short track and you can switch back and forth in real time between two different tubes. So right now, the way that the plugin works, let me scroll down to it, is that you're only able to compare two different tracks at the same time. And here's what it looks like. I've been in touch with the developer and he's informed me that they're actually going to be adding a third track in within a month and unlimited tracks not too long after that. So the eventual goal is that you'll be able to go to any of our tube listings and pull up a list of all the different tubes in that listing and switch in real time between them. So let me show you how it works here. 
So here's Annette Aspic in Liberty. This is a short, I believe, one minute segment of the song. And I can switch back and forth between our Sylvania 1AS and the Marconi 140. Now we recommend, of course, wearing headphones while you're doing this, a good quality pair, and playing them on a device with a good quality DAC. And you can hear the differences in real time between the tubes and decide what you like for your music. Okay, now, when when I do this, Charles, and I've got... Well, you have to hit play first. <laughs> so when I've got the RCA gray plates up, mm -hmm. the tube that you really like to get behind, and I do this, and I come over to the Rogers. They're synchronized. They're synchronized. But it's switching it to the track that was recorded from the Rogers too. Holy smokes. That's freaky. And it will loop so you can go back and forth and just keep listening and see what you like for different different tracks on there. And we're going to try and upload an assortment of different kinds of music as well. Things that are dynamic, good instrumentation, good vocals, and try and get some variety in there for everybody that, you know, likes something a bit different. Right. And then eventually we're going to be able to, you originally thought you'd like to do at least three tubes mm -hmm. in each comparison. So eventually the developer will have the program modified. Or yeah, it's going to be expanded and eventually we'll be able to do as many as we want. But for now, you're going to be seeing a lot of these tube versus tube comparisons. And we're going to try and set up tubes that are a good contrast to each other so you can get a good idea of what's going on with them. And uh, we're going to call this virtual tube rolling. So expect to see a lot more of this in the store. Uh, we're going to be filling out the 6SN7 section first. But if you have any, um, any requests, let us know. Well, wow. well, thanks a lot for doing this, Charles. I think this is going to be great. All right, so let's take a look at what we've been getting in for the summer sale. Well, before we do that, we should talk about what's been going on over at Melatone Kits. Oh, we can't forget about that. Yeah, I mean, we don't always talk about Melatone Kits because sometimes there's not much to talk about, but we have been busy, and we're basically working on the... Um, the, un the new Universal Phono preamp kit. And to get you up to date, Charles just finished designing the PCBs and we just ordered them from the factory yesterday. The quality of Charles's PCBs are just stunning. I've, we, I often keep an eye on our competitors just to see what they're up to. And nobody else makes PCBs as nice as he does. So, and I'll try not to get, let that get to my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work too to make them look that that good and and get the. I mean, there's two elements to the PCB construction, right? One is to get electrically the lowest noise floor. You know, we want easy assembly as well as important good yep. labeling, but they also need to look good as, as well when they're put together. So this it's a lot to ask for, but the electrical interference that's that's the most important we spend hours looking over the designs as charles produces them to see if there's any conflicts particularly with the low voltage grid inputs and in a phono stage oh my goodness we're coming in at five millivolts that is so important that we keep that isolated and away from any noise yeah so and parts are coming in by the thousands and of course we're spending the thousands of dollars here's just a couple of examples of uh, brand new Hammond chokes that have come in. We use these 15 Henry chokes um, on virtually all of our preamps, I think on all of our preamps. And because it's a dual mono design, a lot of the power supply parts are doubled. Yep. So we need a pair of chokes for a little preamp, which most manufacturers do not want to pay that kind of cost for parts. But from the very beginning, when I heard, first heard what a dual power supply, dual model design sounds like, I said, I'm never going to build one of those, <laughs> you know, um, one power supply does both channels. Uh, what it does for the sound stage is just incredible. Yeah. So, and I, I figured the little bit of extra money it costs, our customers would gladly pay. So, so parts are coming in and our next task is to get the top plates and the plinths made and then I'm going to film the build of kit number one. That's going to become the build manual 
And once that's done, we'll be calling for test builders. Yep. Which is going to be an exciting day because we've got a lot of interest in it. In fact, one of our previous uh, kit builders has already put his name down as a test builder. So, And we'll talk more about test builders when we're ready to call you all. Okay. Now, we're going we're gonna to do a lot of show and tell because when the sale opens up, a lot of people buy not only things that they need now for their amps for for rolling or for a new amp that they've got in a lot of our longtime customers stock up on spares yep and we get huge orders i mean we normally can we normally ship inside of 24 hours sometimes an hour or two right but during this week it we we get pushed right to the limit <laughs> some of the orders take hours to put together they're so big but anyways let's take a look at a whole bunch of tubes that we are premium tubes that we have really good inventory on that we've been stocking up the months leading up to the big summer sale we were always building inventory okay let's start with the small tubes now this is just a representation of some of the premium stuff that we do have good inventory on and we just talked about them really quickly, one at a time. So here is the RFT ECC81. That is the 12AT7. And these are just great tubes. Uh, they test excellent. In fact, we've, we've been really lucky. We have some tube hounds in Eastern Europe who are very good at finding some of these premium uh, European tubes, new old stock. Um, I don't know how they find so many of them, but they do. So this has got that stylized logo, sort of a, a ram's head, I think. And oh, that's what I think it is, but we, we don't know definitively yet. But and it's one of the RFT factory logos. Yeah, and I thought it might even be uh, film reels. I actually, one of my last careers was, was as a projectionist, working in 35 mil film. Anyways, um, another RFT. This is the, do you remember the factory name, Charles? Uh, it's an N. That's the new house. New factory. house, yeah. And this is the ECC83. This is the European number for the 12AX7. 12, vintage 12AX7s are next to impossible to find new old stock in enough quantities to come up with matches like this. And we have a whole bunch of these in stock. They're great sounding tubes. Uh, I think we did an episode on them a little while back in which we actually did a soundtrack, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a couple episodes ago. Yeah. And, oh, here's a Mullard. Um, now, it's rebranded. Um, let me get it up on camera for you. Trovac. And it's another 12AX7. And how do we know it's a Mullard for sure? Well, the plates are pretty distinctive. Let me see if I can get it up for you. There's a single hole on the side and it's a flat gray ladder plate, but there's your code right here. And I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but it's got a capital B etched in there with the date on it. So that means it was made in Blackburn. Uh, so this is a Blackburn 12AX7 and we've got quite a few of these still left. Um, really hard tube to keep in stock. Some of the RFT tubes will flash on startup, but almost all of the Muller tubes, not all of them, but almost all of the Muller tubes have quite the flash on startup. Yeah, it was typical for their nine pins to do that. So it really stands out. It's not a defect. It's just, we call it the Mullard flash. Oh, flash. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. First time you see, it, you'll say, whoa, what's that? It's not a defect. It almost tells you that you've almost certainly have a vintage tube and probably a mullard uh 12 au7s we stock the rca clear tops i love these tubes um, i always thought they were good sounding tubes and then we used them in charles's first prototype headphone kit amp and they just sounded amazing wow i yeah. couldn't believe how good they sounded in that circuit and um we sell quite a few of these. I got really lucky. Well, we got really lucky. <laughs> um, I found them though. We got really lucky. Charles finds most of the great tubes these days, but I got really lucky. And one of the suppliers we deal with quite a bit had some listed and um, um, 
and I grab those and then I always ask the question, do you have any more of those? And he said, yeah, I've got lots more. And I said, well, we would like to buy them. <laughs> it was a huge bill. Unbelievable money. Uh, there are pricey tubes for us to buy, but it's it's worth it. They're, they're one of the best 12 AU7s you can get. Yeah, and US made. So in the new in the box, it's, I keep saying this, and I think it's worth repeating, it's getting harder and harder to find new old stock, new in the box. So NOS, NIB tubes. But every once in a while, we get lucky. Um, a tube that's become quite popular in the last few years is the 6DG8. And we've got quite a few of these vintage Phillips tubes still left. And there's quite a few variations. This is sort of the standard. Um, this is the gray shield version. It's got really the upper part. Let me see if we get you on camera here. The upper part here has got a lot of sturdy kind of structure. And this version here is kind of interesting. It's got sort of a, what would you call that, Charles? It's like a, it's uh, like, like a, a, an A-frame. Yeah. yeah, I think we call it the A-frame tube. Anyways, they've all got their Phillips codes, of course, and they're all testing really high. Oh, and I forgot to show you this. This, this one here has a really good intact Bugle Boy label. And that's rare just on its own. Yeah, and the reason for that is most of the print uh, that they use, the, the paint that they used for the logo, just deteriorates. It's like, um, it's like a fine chalk today. It just wipes right off. You know, 60 or 70 years after the tubes were made. A few of them were made with better stuff, and you can see I'm just not, gonna, I'm not willing to touch it. And they survived a little bit better, and some of them just weren't handled and unless you touch the touch the paint it, it'll stay on but almost all of them it just fell right off so even brand new tubes the the printing just came right off luckily we've got the etched factory coats okay so that's a selection of small nine pins what else have we got now we have hundreds of thousands of tubes in stock. So we're just dropping in on some of the more popular um, tubes. And the 6SN7 has got to be one of the most, let's see if we've got any more zoom left, there we go. It's got to be one of the most popular tubes that we sell. Here's an early uh, Marconi uh, elevated T-plate um, 6SN7 GTB. They did make them as GTs mm -hmm. and a few GTAs, but mostly GTs and GTBs. And the Marconi had a huge factory in Montreal. My dad actually walked past it as a kid and he said it took a long time to walk past the factory. It was four square city blocks and they made everything in that factory, not just vacuum tubes. But Marconi was one of the first international electronics companies and they wanted to do volume. And they, well, what factory doesn't, but <laughs> they were really into volume. So they would rebrand this tube for RCA, for GE, for Westinghouse. All the major brands, a lot of Canadian brands are, are rebranded Marconis. And of course, the reason why they could could do that con control so much of the early market is they had many of the first patents mm -hmm. for these types of twos and um if you don't if you don't know it the foundation for what became rca was marconi usa general electric bought that company and assembled it as rca or what became rca so and i think the main reason they did that wasn't market share but to get their hands on those uh, those patents patents were everything back then yeah. yeah and they still are today i bet okay what's up next well we've got the first of the early sylvania modern 6sn7 so this is a gta i don't know if you can see that on the screen or not and this is the straight plate. So it's a back-to-back T-plate, -back full chrome. These are wonderful tubes. One, if, if I was on a desert island and I had one amp and it used two 6SN7s, this is probably the tube I would take with me. <laughs> There's another three or four or five or six that would be really close contenders. 
And this would be another one. This this is the next generation from the 19 later in the 1950s. These were made back in the early 1950s, these in the later 1950s, and this is just the beginning of the modern Sylvania 6SN7. So it's another GTA, but it's got an angled plate. Hopefully you can see that. Very similar Sonics, a little bit more commonly available, so a little less expensive. And then we've got quite a few. Now these are, I'm showing you, I think are all new old stock tubes, not the Marconi. But in fact, interesting enough, we find the Marconi in large numbers used. Yeah, we don't find a lot of new old stock. We don't find yeah. a lot of new old stock, so we have no idea what the heck happened to the new old stock tubes. I hope to God they didn't get crushed. <laughs> that would be pretty terrible. It would be. But you know, at the end of the tube era, a lot of things like that happened. So anyways, this is the modern Sylvania 6SN7 GTB. It's got angled plates, a shorter bottle. This is not the last version because it's got fuller chrome, but a little later on, they got, I think they got better at making vacuum. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they needed less of the gettering, so the chrome is a lot shallower. Okay, what's next? Let's keep rolling. Okay, so I've got some real eye candy now. So, one of the things that we've been focusing on now for going on a couple of years is alternative tubes that will get you into those premium tubes for reasonable money that you can find that are available because one of the greatest uh, 6SN7s ever made was the very first generation Sylvania, the GT. You can't play it in a lot of modern equipment. Some people will try and take a chance. A lot of these tubes will get noisy permanently and you know, uh, they're, it's a shame. Yeah, it's a shame. So that's why we designed the Universal 6 or 12 SN7 kit preamp. So it, you, you could play virtually any 6 or 12 SN7 tube ever made. And if you happen to own one of ours, and there's a couple of other people out there, more and more manufacturers are starting to make variable voltage preamps following yep. along behind what we've been pioneering I think and some are careful and they uh, they bias their tubes so that you can actually play the GTs in them too but always make sure before you try running them so these tubes are actually brand new in the box it's 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 close to you know going back to 1940 to your electronic store and asking for a pair of Sylvanias. This is what you would get. I'm going to break that box and that one. Have I got a knife handy, Charles? Well, let's Somewhere. see if I can find one. There you go. The car cardboard on many of these vintage tubes is now... It's just disintegrated. It's over 80 years old, so um, it doesn't last forever. And these were meant to be single-use boxes where you pull the tube out and that was it. See if I can get one out. Yeah, that's true. Nobody ever expected these boxes to still be around 80 plus years from now. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That, if you've got a 12 volt option on the filament, you could play this. Look at that. <laughs> a 12 volt bad boy. Yeah, isn't that amazing? I mean, they're just absolutely gorgeous. We're going to look at a few more like that. I'll get this to Charles to put away. And here is another one of the really high demand tubes, the tongue saws. And I've got two different types as 12 volt tongue saws. These are the tall boy mouse ears. So very low noise with a mica that is um, bracing basically the tube structure. And we've also got the regular version uh, without the mouse ears. And they both sound amazing. The level of detail, the tongues um, don't have quite the warmth of the Sylvania type but they excel at detail. That's what they do best, yep. And there's the regular type. And these, of course, these are these are Jan tubes, so Joint Army, Navy, so these are mil-spec tubes, but the likelihood is that they are basically the same tube as the domestic tube. S sometimes a mil-spec tube is an improvement that has a longer life filament, or there's some special specification that's been placed on top of the, ori the, the original design that's used in consumer 
um, electronics. But other times they've just pulled tubes off the production line and they're using them to fill a military contract. So they slap a Jan on there. Yeah, that's right. Because it already meets, there will be a specification on the order, yep. on the contract, and it already meets it. So I would say well over half, maybe 90% of the time it's the same tube. Exactly. So um, there is a bit of cachet to owning the Jan tube and people will charge more for it. I, I try not to. I, Anyways, pricing is a whole other discussion. Let's put those aside, Charles, carefully. Okay. We have quite a few of those in stock. Um, what's up next? Uh, oh, yeah. So, there's the Rogers branded straight plate, back to back, a very early tube. It's a GT. But this is actually really interesting because just like how Rogers was using the internals of Sylvania tubes, uh, the later GTA, GTB versions, this is using the internals of the early Sylvania WGT tube. Which so, is a highly sought after highly tube. Highly sought after military spec tube. And we also have this in a Loctal format too. But if you don't feel like adapting the base, this is going to work just fine. And I'm going to show you some Loctals in just a minute. And there is an RCA silver labeled gray glass 6SN7 GT or GTB Charles. It's a GT. It's and a GT. we just ran out of these not long ago and I managed to find a bunch more. So they're going to be in the store right, right away too. And these sell out practically instantly. People well, love we, the sound of them. We actually had them. You just discovered them in our inventory. No, we, they were buried. <laughs> we have, I mean, when I say we have thousands of tubes, I mean, we have thousands of tubes and periodically Charles has time to go through, you know, stuff that's in storage in bulk and, and bring yes, out some of these, yep. sort through and bring out, and you make new discoveries every day when you're doing that. So one of the really great things that you could do, I think, is use a tube that requires an adapter that's identical to the octal version. So here is, we're talking 6SN7s. So this is the 7N7. So this is the Loctal. Sylvania made this. It's branded Tungsol, but Sylvania invented the Loctal tube type mm -hmm. and made, what, 90% of them? A few uh, may. I, I think they made practically all of them. There's some theories about National Union making some of the tubes, but it's... Uh, from my from the evidence I've seen, I think they're all Sylvanias. Right. So, but they were because they they controlled the Loctal format. They rebranded for everybody. Absolutely. Right? They yeah. have RCA and GE. tongue soles and yeah, everybody. And this is a treasure. This is the seven N seven. So it's the Loctal equivalent to the six S N seven GT in this case. And look at that. That's a smoke glass, beautiful crisp. Chrome. This is a very early 6SN7. And it's actually comparable to the 6SN7W, which is the very, very first version of a military spec tube that, that Sylvania made. So, And as a 6SN7, they sell for huge they're money. They're incredibly rare, huge uh, I think money. you've seen them for a thousand bucks a piece. Yeah, it's it's insane. And so, you can buy these affordably as Loctals, put adapters on them and whoa, you can go back to 1939. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> or even a little bit earlier. And here is the 7F7 and this is the 6SL7 lo Sylvania Loctal equivalent. And this is the back-to-back -back gray plate version. And again, uh, amazing sounding tubes. The internals are exactly the same as the Octal Sylvania. 6SL7 GT, the early ones, yep. Yep. And I mean, one of the things that got Charles really interested in Loctals is Sylvania invented the type and made most of them, if not all of them. And we and love the sound of Sylvania. And we tubes. love the sound. We're not the only one. Sylvania is one of our best sounding tubes. Okay. Enough for octals. Well, at least yeah, let me clear these out of here. <laughs> voltage gain tubes. Okay, let's take a look at some power tubes. So, one of the most popular power tubes ever made was the EO34. Let me get them up on screen for you. And 
I've got three vintage types that I really like the best. And one of them is the RFTs. And we've been really lucky lately. We've got a lot of new old stock. Um, more new old stock than used, which is which is strange with uh, with vintage tubes, but it's nice whenever you're finding vintage new old stock power tubes yeah. because they don't last as long. Yeah, much better to go new old stock if you can afford it. And the RFTs do everything really well, but they excel at detail. And they're just great EL34s. Uh, what's up next? Uh, it looks like some more EL34s. Yeah, uh, Svetlana Wing Seas. Now, there is a modern copy of this tube made in a different factory by a different company but using all of the logos and you know yeah, and they try to make it look pretty close too but they don't sound anywhere near the same they don't have the same lifespan there's nothing the same so don't buy them <laughs> but the true vintage tube does cost money if you want a good sounding eel 34 you got to go vintage and it's going to cost so this is got the um we can see here they've got actually on the box they've got both of their common logos so there's the flying or winged c logo and this is the stylized s of svetlana so the tubes have the s on them and these are just great sounding tubes the rfts have um had that level of detail the svetlanas have the warmth of the mullard xf2s and um they do everything really well, but they've got that warm, rich mid-range. And this is, of all the EL34s we sell, this is the one we can't keep in stock. Uh, we could we could have thousands of quads of EL34s available by Svetlana, and they would all sell in a year. <laughs> and last of the EL34s is, take a look at this. This is, um, this is a, a quad of what I consider to be the very best EL34 ever made, the, the vintage Mullard XF2s, all made in the 1960s into about 1972. And look, they're all rebranded, which is really common with vintage tubes. And any tube that was sort of like a high demand tube that the manufacturers Phillips own Mullard, yeah, everybody knows that. Um, they were really careful with their patents, so they didn't they didn't license them out. They probably uh, would lock you up if uh, they caught you stealing their patent <laughs> rights. Well, I mean that was their whole business, right? The, yep. All the tube development that they had done. Phillips Muller developed so many of the types that we know today. The small nine pin tubes, the 12AU7, the E80CC, the 12AX7, the 12AT7. Those were all developed by Phillips and Muller. Um, and it, you know, it's interesting. We actually had a problem with the sale of a tube recently in which somebody got upset because, uh, we sold a tube that didn't have the right branding on it. It had been rebranded. <laughs> and the strange thing is that we sent a beautiful tube with the rebrand on it. I always send a note saying it's the exact same tube. In this case, it was a tongue saw rebranded. Mm -hmm. And it, we couldn't believe it because he was making an issue over a high testing tube um, that was rebranded. And I thought, if you're going to be concerned about that, man, you should not be in vintage tubes because <laughs> it could be half of all vintage tubes ever made were rebranded tubes. If not more, if, it's incredible. Yeah. So. Anyways, don't get fussy about your labels. It's it's, it's who, the sound that matters. It's the sound that matters. Who made that actual tube is what is important. And of course, how they sound. Um, and we've got a couple of rectifiers to look at quickly. We've got good inventory on this. Uh, we were talking Svetlana. Let me see if I can get the Svetlana label up here. Oh, the label has been rubbed off on that one. This one's intact. And this is um, this is a dual rectifier, so uh, full wave that is um, the Soviet equivalent of the 5U4G, and that's become quite a popular rectifier in some modern um, amps these days. And of course, those amps arrive mostly with Chinese rectifiers, and one of the first things they do is send me they send us a note saying. Um, is this a direct equivalent? Yes, it is. And, um, and they're made by Svetlana, the true vintage Svetlana from St. Petersburg. They come in a gray plate. 
and a black plate version. And I honestly don't know. That is the coating, right? The underlying plate is the same. And I honestly don't know if there's any difference. At one point in about 1962-63, General Electric, RCA, um, started switching over from black coatings to gray coatings. Yep. So I think the formula changed, and I would hope it improved, but I, I honestly don't know, because I don't really hear a difference between a black plate and a gray plate. Yeah, it, it really depends more on the construction of the plates, we think. Yeah, well, the overall design of the tube, too, mm -hmm. as well. So, And some companies like Sylvania would make a 6SL7 with a black plate, and at the same time, they make a gray plate. So I don't think they were too concerned either about it. Probably different plants or maybe availability of materials during the war in particular maybe determine that. Yeah. So, well, if you stayed all the way to the end, and I'm sorry, this, this is a long show because we had lots of tubes to look at. I always love looking at vintage tubes. I can go on forever. So <laughs> Charles says, hurry it up. <laughs> We're going to hit an hour. <laughs> but uh, if you stay to the very end, you don't need the cheers codes. What you do need to get 15% off the entire store is the summer 2023 code, all one line. And there's an email blast that Charles sent out to anybody who's been a customer in the past. And we have we're well over a thousand I customers. We're roughly 1,400 now, which is a big boost from last year. So thank you guys for that. Yeah. So this is this is not a sale that you need to tell all your friends online about. This is a sale to thank all of our viewers and our past customers for being just great. 99.99% mm -hmm. of you have been fantastic. We love you all. And, you know, jump into the summer sale early, get what you need, and then head to the beach. <laughs> Enjoy the nice weather while it lasts. This is Jim. And Charles. Signing off. Cheers, everyone. <laughs>